Hi guys, Mrs. Scatch here. Today I'm gonna to be giving you some information about the stop motion app that you can find on the iPad or on your iPhone. I'm gonna be using it on the iPad. Um, the format may be a little bit different on your iPhone, but the buttons all do the same thing. You just kinda of have to find where they are. To begin with, just go ahead and open up the app. It's that pretty blue one. And when you walk in, uh, when you open it up, you'll see that sometimes other projects might open up. Um, but to start a new project, you would scroll to the left and it'll give you an option to tap the plus sign to create a new project. And then here it'll open up your camera window um, and the stop motion filming app. So there's a couple of things that you need to do before you can access other parts of the app. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and show you first how to take pictures with and without a timer. So here it's pretty straightforward, that little red button you tap here to take pictures. So I'll take a couple of them. Another good use, uh, use of this app is that you can set a timer. So here, before you um, turn on the timer, you actually have to set it. So when you turn it on, it'll give you an option of intervals. Right now it's at a 30 second interval, which is quite a bit. Because I am in close con uh, distance from my objects, I'm actually gonna move it down to five seconds. You can't go any less than five seconds, unfortunately, but they can be as far as 90 seconds. You would use that in the sense of doing more time-lapse option. So bring it down to five seconds and then I'll close it. And then this little button here right next to the clock, if I turn it on, the timer's enabled. And you'll see that around the red dot, you'll see the timer go off and it'll take a picture. Now I can move my little men without having to go back and click. So this is a really nice option to help you save time because you'll find when you're making your stop motion app that the most tedious thing is taking pictures and then moving back and forth. So I'll just take one more here and then I will turn off the app. I mean the app, the timer. Um, some other options that you can do here, if you press the little camera button, it brings up some uh, camera function. So for example, here you have automatic focus. If you disable it, you're gonna have to focus it here, but I do want it on. You can also um, disable your exposure, your white balance. So this gets a little bit more advanced, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. You can also flip your cameras around. Here I am, which we don't need to do. Um, and here, if you wanna deal with the rule of thirds, turn on those little grid marks. And then finally, there are options for green screen remote camera, but because this is a free app, we're not gonna be dealing with it. Um, you can also disable sound, but we're gonna be cover uh, taking that out in iMovie. So let me show you the other things that you can do. You could actually record sound within here. It asks for, asks for access to your microphone. You would just hit record and have it um, over what you need. I would suggest doing this more in iMovie just because it gives you more freedom. You can add images um, that you have in your phone or iPad, but it's actually a locked feature. That is more on the one that you have to pay for. The most important one I would suggest to you is this one. It looks like a little wheel next to the clapboard. And this is your settings. So it'll ask you about play your last 12 frames, meaning when you play back, it'll just play the most recent ones you took. Would you like to, when you replay, does it replay it as a loop? The one that you need to pay attention most here is the movie frame. So remember when I taught you in class about the ideal frames per second to create a smooth stop motion movie is between eight to 10. Right now it's at five. So to change the frames per second, I wanna make it more, so I'm gonna put it at eight because I actually do not have a lot of pictures. Um, as you take more, it will gradually be easier to see the movement of your objects. I will say that you can adjust depending on how fast or slow you need your objects or cutouts or anything you're else using for stop motion to be. So once I'm done, just go ahead and hit the little wheel. And if I wanna replay, I would just go ahead and it'll play it on a loop. Here are my little guys, very simple. So remember, on average, you guys each for a 30 second film are about to be taking around 300 photos, which seems like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, when your object is moving very little, it's not. So let's say I'm ready to um, finish my movie and transfer it to my laptop for editing. This is how simple it is. You would go back here, press that little button, and then at the bottom of the screen, you have options to go to YouTube, to delete it. What you wanna do is press this button in the middle to share. It's going to give you several different options. The only thing you need to do is save to camera roll. 
Once you save to their camera roll, it gives you options. There's some really cool things. You could do an animated GIF, you can do it square for Instagram, but we always were gonna do it HD at 180 um, pixels. So you'll hit share, it turns it into a movie, and the reason we exported it to the camera roll is that it makes it easy to transfer to iMovie. So if you guys go ahead and click the annotation, it'll actually will take you to the um, next YouTube clip showing you how to edit your films in iMovie. Um, I hope that you enjoy the stop motion app as much as I do. I think it's great and it has several uses. It's great for time lapse. It's great for making films and also just for finding ways to be creative. So have a good job. Bye.